When did you become interested in theater? How old were you? Uh, I was about three or four years old. Uh, that's the first memory about the theater in my life. Uh, there were several performances I are, can remember quite brightly. Uh, one of them was uh, Shakespeare's Tempest, uh, uh, which I saw in the Rustaveli Theater. It was a British uh, British performance. Another one was um, a performance uh, Caucasian Chalk Circle by uh, Robert Sturua, uh, and I can remember this quite brightly some you know pictures and uh, I think most uh, important uh, for me was a performance uh, musicians from the Bremen which I saw in Yath, um, Yath theater uh, later uh, the director of this performance will become my master my teacher in the university Gia so these some points are more most significant uh, in my life um, I think it was uh, the very beginning of uh, of my my uh, my theater. Did you get more interested in in it uh, when you went to university or before then? Oh, uh, of course, before uh, I was about um, five or six year old. Me and my nephew, we had our own theater. We have we had uh, three performance was mm, kind of a show type uh, of the performance. We had one kind of a circus and one uh, puppet theater. We were sell uh, selling tickets. It was um, kind of the family theater <laughs> where our uh, family was, our audience, they were looking for these shows. It was the uh, beginning of my professional career <laughs> in the theater. So, what kind of puppets did you use? Oh, uh, I've used a... Uh, well, what did you use when you were five? Um, it was... Uh, uh, puppets were made from kind of garbage, everything I found uh, at my home. Uh, it was a... Uh, uh, painted paper, uh, parts of the leather, and uh, something like this. Everything I found uh, in my house, I mm, constructed the puppets from them. Uh, I found them maybe uh, two years ago. It was such a huge impulse for me. Suddenly I appear uh, in my childhood. I was thrown back to the beginnings. It was very emotional, <laughs> a very emotional moment. Well, that's interesting. Had you seen, you must have seen some puppets before that. So what did you see? Uh, no. No? No, no. I just made it, um, I just, I was making something. I was making something and uh, no one knew what's, uh, what's going to be done. Just so, because I had uh, several just toys, um, which I uh, which I was playing when, uh, with, but suddenly it appeared that they can be alive. It was uh, it was a, a puppets for a, a finger, small ones, but <laughs> but we made very interesting dialogues be, between these puppets, so they became alive. No one knew what's going to be uh, done with them. So you went from toys to puppets? Uh, yep, exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, frankly speaking, I, w I hope that someday I will come to the beginning where I did start it. It's very hard because, you know, we all uh, grew old, uh, we all... Uh, we are changing, but this uh, childhood's impulse, uh, I think it's going to be uh, the very supreme aim for me to go to the basics, to go to the beginnings of my theater.
It's, I think it's uh, kind of hard to explain, but um, what does it mean for me? Well, anyways, I'll try my best to go to the basics and go back to the beginnings of, uh, of this. I, I think you and I completely agree on this, because <laughs> for me, puppets are about objects and what you can do with objects, but uh, I've, you know, for me it's about finding whatever and creating, and I think that's very important, but not enough about me. Uh, so, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely agree. Well, then you went on, uh, as you were growing up, did you see Gabriadze at some point? Yes, of course. And what was your yes. feeling about seeing Gabriadze's Oh, uh, Of course, it's a huge impulse. It's a hugest, hugest interest and uh, just great. Tell, tell just me great. more about your experiences uh, going to that theater, what it was like. What did you see? Did you... I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was a kid. I was eight or nine years old. Uh, I don't exactly remember which performance uh, was it, name of performance. I, um, Marshall de Fantier's Diamond <laughs> or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a very interesting, uh, but you know, it's hard to explain. Uh, did that performance uh, made uh, gave me an impulse of making that? What do you remember? What kind of images stayed with you? Ah, uh, uh, dialogues, dialogues, uh, the voices that were recorded in the backwards. It was uh, voices of the hugest actors, uh, very well-known Georgian actors, and um, the voices made these uh, puppets alive. It was very interesting for watching a dialogue between them. So in this period when you were very young, between five and eight, when you had these experiences, <clears throat> what era was that in Georgia? What was, was that the 80s or 90s? Or? No, it was 80s. Yes. It was 80s. It was, uh, you know, the, uh, it was uh, the end of the communism, uh, socialism in Georgia and in the Soviet Union as well. Uh, but um, uh, but uh, people in Georgia didn't felt it uh, much um, till 90s maybe, uh, because um, it was a kind of a static atmosphere in Tbilisi. Uh, it, uh, Tbilisi was uh, very beautiful, small and a very um, authentic uh, city. And um, we didn't felt uh, the pressure of the politics at that moment. So, um, for the creation, for the creative, for art, it was, I think it was a very good period because you didn't thought about anything, just art, uh, just culture, and nothing else. Do you remember the films of uh, Carlos Sumacari, of like Bambora and things like that? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah. course. Well, I just discovered yeah. <laughs> his museum last year and his granddaughter, Daro, let me go in to look, and I was amazed by the creativity of, of his puppets, and I thought, if I lived here, that would have been, you know, <laughs> as, especially if I was young, that would have been yeah. very, yeah. something interesting to me. Uh, th th that period, actually, for me, it was very, very interesting, and um, I, I remember it quite well. I remember the old Tbilisi, I remember the atmosphere uh, where everything was very calm, everyone was smiling, everyone was happy. Uh, that, uh, that was um, a very, very good and very, very um, sorry, it was a very good period for making, for creating. Uh, and it, that period was, I think, kind of ending of the era of Georgian, very, uh, very huge part of Georgian theater, uh, Georgian art, 
because later there were 90s and everything just uh, burned out. Mm -hmm. Nothing was left. Uh, just, uh, you know, small shinings uh, that also went to a ruins. Uh, so that, that was the that was the period when uh, everything what uh, what was significant for Georgian art and uh, everything what had meaning was slowly going down and slowly uh, burying. Now I think it's going to be a kind of a rebuilding era. In the nineties, well, you were a teen then. Yeah, and. Uh... What do you remember? Uh, do you remember any theater or puppetry from that period? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Um, when people asking me about 19s and uh, theater in Georgia, first of all, I remember, uh, and um, I remember the signs on the theater's doors. Actually, all the theater had the signs. Uh, we have a warming of the parterre. It was very cold, uh, nothing worked. And um, only uh, in the theaters, it was the signings on, yeah. Yeah, signings on the doors of the theater and at the cash desk that uh, we are warming up uh, audience. It was very cold. It was absolutely impossible to sit, uh, to sit and watch for the performance because so they didn't really have heat. No, no. They, just, heat. they said that just the theater itself would warm you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that, that uh, this is the first thing I remember about that period. And um, but most important, uh, I was I was working in the theater at that moment already in the Yacht Theatre. Uh, I was working as the supporting actor uh, at the uh, stage worker um, and uh, all that time I was spending in theatre. I wasn't going home, I slept in the theatre, I, I lived there. Uh, so that period was, um, you know, kind of, I was living in the no, I don't know how to say it was uh, kind of the closed territory and um, the world outside the theater wasn't touching us. We were just inside and we were just creating um, something very special for, for Georgia because when everything was ruined, everything was stopped. In our theater, we were making performances, we were spending nights, we were working hard, we were just rehearsing and rehearsing. Uh, we had a study inside, uh, we have a studio studies. Uh, so that's why that period, 90s, dark 90s, cold 90s, was very special for me because I um, spent all my life in the theater at that moment. And I've learned everything I know right now. I studied uh, there in uh, my theater where I was working. It was uh, Yath Children's Theater. That's mm. Yath. Yath, uh, Yath. Ch Yath Children's Theater. Uh, the artistic director, uh, Nika Jandieri, chief director, Gia Kitia. Um, uh, they made uh, Solaris, kind of the Solaris act closed, closed system where only uh, theater, only art can, uh, could happen uh, inside uh, of, of that. And the world outside the theater wasn't touching, wasn't touching uh, everything what's happened inside. When you say Solaris, are you referring to Tarkovsky's film? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I thought so, but I just want to make sure. Yeah. Uh, so, and you were working in children's theater, was that puppetry too? Yes, of course, it was a puppetry too. I was playing with uh, puppets. Uh, we had uh, several performances for, uh, for the kids. Uh, and I can't, I can't, uh, I, uh, you, you can't even imagine how was, um, how much love 
and how much fun we were giving to them because nothing was happening nothing it was just dark it was just cold no no nothing um, every everything was very dark very huge pressure and um, <clears throat> there was only place where kids can could could see anything could see anything uh, happiness love um, art it was so, only place for children so that really affected your view of what the theater means to people of course yeah. of course of course uh, of course and mm, what's very uh, m most important in the art is the yath's heart you have to keep a kid inside you child inside you and only this one gives you impulse for creating for the making uh, uh, art uh, for a making theater uh, and it doesn't mean that you have to make only performances for the children this is uh, this is uh, impulse that's inside you the children inside you is making you a huge pushing to make uh, to uh, because this is most clear view uh, it's uh, and it's more uh, most pure uh, uh, energy for making uh, art and creating so what kind of puppets were you using? Were you using the kind of style that I often see now with a kind of almost modified bunraku with the little things behind? Yep, exactly, exactly. Yes. Uh, I think um, at that, at this moment, I think it's most, um, most, most easy to use and most easy to make them alive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very comfortable. Small tables, puppets holding, two or three persons working with that. And uh, it's very, very interesting to watch uh, during the rehearsals how, uh, how uh, this dead body goes alive. Did this style come in from Russia or from uh, Czech no, Republic? I, or? No idea. No, no I, actually, I see it everywhere. Uh, yeah, actually, no idea because uh, at the very beginning we tried the, a lot of the types. It's uh, what was it? classic marionettes mm -hmm. it was a finger it was kangaroo puppets but uh, i think it's um, this type of the puppets became most comfortable yes. for our crew and for our gang well i do notice here there is a trend to use those the the kind of bunraku type puppets but also other styles mixed in yeah yeah i i think in the next performances we are going to uh, use a mixed type uh, mm -hmm. mix a mixed type of the puppets at this performance, actually, we have no one style, one style. Uh, but next, I, I think we're gonna mix and we, 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 we're gonna make more experiments right. with this. So then, uh, unlike many of the countries in uh, Eastern Europe after the end of the communist era, Georgia went into the 90s, which was is like Yugoslavia. It was a period of darkness, and then it started to come out again at the beginning of the 21st century. Yeah. And as it did, uh, how was, how do you think that uh, puppetry interacted with uh, the society as it, you know, came into, suddenly after uh, Saakashvili, things became more commercial, I mean, slowly rise, like now you see, you know, uh, there's movies mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. all that. And I'm sure in the 90s, there wasn't much of that because of, so, uh, you know, the, the times, but suddenly you get movies and all the music comes in and, and you have, uh, you know, video games and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, all of that. How, how do you think that uh, the puppet theater has uh, mixed or, or into that society, the new thing that's growing? I think the puppetry is uh, one of the most non-commercial uh, type of the theater because you are not uh, uh, well everything depends just on you uh, because you can make a puppet from everything you can use any material 
uh, and uh, budget can be zero of the performance. Uh, so uh, it gives you opportunity to not to be a commercial type of the theater. You can um, you have a lot of options. You have a lot of options in the small machinery, uh, producing puppets, making uh, stage design for them, and the budget can be zero, absolutely. Uh, that means that you can be aimed just on making a performance, uh, not to uh, work uh, and think about a lot of money or a lack of the money, you're not thinking about nothing. You need just puppet, performer, performer, and making this performance. So I think um, it's good. Uh, it has a huge future uh, because you are um, dependent all only on yourself, not uh, not on anything. What do you think of the fact that, uh, and and how do you think the puppetry relates to this. What do you think of the fact that now so much entertainment comes from the screen? Yeah. You know, whether it's the movie or the, the telephone in your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what does puppetry mean in a world where people... Why do we need puppetry now? <clears throat> I mean, why not just get everything from screens? Okay. Um, uh, I'll tell you that not only puppetry, but all type of the theater um, means very much for the modern society because of uh, you see something on the screen you see something in your phone uh, you have you see something in the TV but um, the theater uh, theater is uh, only live uh, type of the art because this is the only place where audience can see a live character. This is the only place. Uh, so that means that uh, meaning of uh, theater and uh, of course the puppetry is hugest part of this is uh, uh, it's uh, um, very important and uh, you know all of the time um, everyone was talking about death Theater is gonna die. First time we heard it when the cinema come came up. Said, oh, this is the end of the theater. No way. The second part was when the uh, comp uh, PC PC games came in. They said cinema will die. Theater will die. All other uh, kind of the art will go away. No way. Uh, because because human. Uh, personality needs uh, contact with a, a live character and uh, the theater is the only place this do you think it has something to do with the things you can touch and feel yeah yeah yeah, yeah of course of course you see you see a live hamlet yeah <laughs> you see a live don quixote and it means it means everything for you and you, uh, uh, the, the theater is only place where you can't lie. You can't lie. You have to make, um, you have to play a character from the very beginning to the end. It's only place where a person can contact with this. So uh, theater never dies. Uh, and puppetry is... Um, very high level of uh, of the theater because of um, you have you are making something divine you are having a dead body and making it alive so it's uh, I think it's very it's very divine uh, kind and rank of uh, theater is that how you would define puppetry is that your definition of puppetry is something how would you define if someone oh. says, what's a puppet? What's oh. a puppet? Uh, uh, it's a difficult question. Yeah, it's and a, I ask uh, everyone I've interviewed, and it's, as soon as I say it, they're like, okay. Oh. <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think it's something divine. 
really divine because you are touching dead peace, mm -hmm. making it this life. It, it's uh, it's impossible to explain how 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 much and what kind of impulse is uh, inside of this process making this uh, dead piece alive uh, very hard to explain so it's it's maybe like a reflection of what god has done to us in some sense yeah of course of course of course um so that's why the theater also the theater is very very uh, divine um uh, and uh, it touches very religious uh, parts of our life because you have to make your character alive and uh, no something, something like this so um, someone told me you teach uh, in, in the university and, and so what what subjects do you teach uh, stage directing and acting okay drama acting yeah. do, you, do you deal with puppets much uh, no no not at this moment we okay. had the several courses of the uh, puppetry but now uh, the master of the puppetry, Givi Sachmelidze, uh, gone. You went to university. You went to. Th uh, is there a special theater school here or arts? Uh, yeah, uh, several studios. Mm -hmm. We have several studios. Yes. I was in the studio which was in my theater. Then, uh, and then I, go, and then I uh, go to the university. Theater. Did you work for other theaters? No, the only theater I worked is the Yath Children's Theater. Uh -huh. Tell me about what gave you the idea for this. Now, I know you had been doing some productions. Mm -hmm. Is the Don Quixote your original production? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I saw f pictures of it somewhere else. Yeah. That's, it has been performed a few times. Yes. And, um, and people, everyone who's, who's told me about it said they loved it. So, you know, that's nice. Uh, but... Uh, uh, what gave you the idea to do this theater? And tell me a little bit about the the Tbilisi Chamber Theater. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think the, all of these ideas are very connected to each other. Um, I worked in the Yath Children's Theater uh, for 14 years. Uh, all I spent there all my childhood and who my teenage age, uh, teenage years. Uh, and then new director came in and just throw me away. <laughs> Politics changed. I understand. Yeah. I've been there. Uh, in a few months, uh, I start uh, studying in the theatrical university. In a few, in a, in one month, I became a lecturer in the theater university, uh, and that period I thought that it's end of my career as a stage director, and I go just to the studying. But then something happened. I, I can't explain what happened, and I made this, made this several performances uh, in the Tumanishvili Theater. It was one of them was waiting for a Godot, and another one was a Don Quixote. Uh, there was impulse that became an impulse for a finding place for people like me who has who wants to make something but has no possibility. So that's why I sold my house and I bought <laughs> the basement. And now with friends and uh, I rebuilt it and created a theater. So this isn't get, you're not doing this through any official agency or anything. This is just your place. Yeah. Which is good. Because I've I've run into a little bit of uh, uh, the bureaucratic side of Georgia, and I can understand that. That, that very means frustrating. that that means that we are absolutely free. Yes, we exactly. don't depend to anyone. Exactly. And uh, what? Well, sorry, I have to add something that um, the first impulse of making Don Quixote in a puppets 
was that there are no more alive Don Quixotes in a modern society. Uh, so that's uh, why, uh, that was the reason of making Don Quixotes and the puppets. No more alive Don Quixotes. Mm -hmm. But right now I think that me and our friends, my friends, uh, the staff who is making this theater, we all, we have a kind of a Don Quixotic impulses. We are fighting with uh, this. The windmill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we are fighting. Yeah, maybe we lose with this fight, but, um, you know, we are just a small ring in the huge chain of this kind of a Don Quixote type of life. Well, kind that's, of that's life. why I moved to Georgia, too. <laughs> because it's, it's something that I felt I had to do. It's kind of crazy, especially coming all the way from Alaska, the other side of the world. But, uh, and, and believe me, there have been moments where I'm saying, what am I doing here? But I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, so anyway, well, uh, one last thing. What do you think, what do you, what do you hope for, for this theater? Uh, I want just to just make people happy. Even if they cry, I want to f feel them, make them happy, give them happiness, uh, the happy as we are when we are making something. Uh, we have a lack of love just for today. We are just in a very dark period. We live in a very dark period and this can't happen more darker because this is the peak of the darkness but the darkest part of the day means that sunrise will come soon and we are waiting for this sunrise everything I want is just to make audience happy as we are when we are making our performance. It's very hard to explain, but um, yeah, that's it, I think, yeah. Perfect. It's a different kind of darkness than the 90s, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Because the 90s was, it was you know, it we was were physical. Yes, yes, and we were very close to each other. Exactly. If we were very close to each other, we were fighting together with this darkness. And now it seems so good. It seems so okay. It's all a mask. Yeah. It's an illusion. Yeah. And this illusion is in the whole world. It not, it, it's not just about Georgia. Oh, no. The whole world in, is in this darkness. The yeah. whole world. Uh, but sun will rise, I, I, I'm sure. And, and we can't give up. No, 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 no way. Or, no way. or give in to the... No way, I'm just, I'm just too old to give up. Uh, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, you're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you, and, no. but my feeling is... We are too old to give up. <laughs>